What's up, YouTube? It's your boy John from Project Ellsworth, and I am back with you today to show you guys another section of my movie collection. Let's do it. All right, today we are looking at row two, section five, which is this guy right here. I'll get that pulled and show you what I got. As always, I hope everybody out there is doing well and staying safe. All right, let's get into it. First up, we have Jordan Peele's Get Out. Fantastic movie. If you haven't seen this movie, you got to check it out as soon as you can. There was a lot of hype and build up about this movie, and I think it's very well deserved. Awesome, awesome movie. Um, let's see. Get Out is truly original, grimly tense, and in tune with its time. When Chris, a young African-American man, visits his white girlfriend's family estate, he, become, he becomes ensnared in the, in the more sinister real reason for the invitation. At first, Chris reads the family's overly accommodating behavior as nervous, as nervous attempts to deal with their daughter's interracial relationship. But as the weekend progresses, a series of increasingly disturbing discoveries lead him to a truth that he could never have imagined. This, pardon, this speculative, thr speculative thriller from Blumhouse and the mind of Jordan Peele is equal parts gripping thriller and provocative commentary. Apparently my eyes aren't ready to read yet today. Get Out is awesome folks, give it a shot. It's really, really good. Next up we have I didn't even know that this thing uh, existed, to be totally honest with you. And when I bought this, I got it for $1 at Dollar Tree. It's on one of my Dollar Tree haul videos. The documentary, which is what spawned the television series Ghost Adventures. I haven't watched this thing yet, but I really want to, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm curious. I've tried to watch Ghost Adventures on numerous occasions, and I find it to be almost boring to the point that it's intolerable. I'm very interested in it, to be totally honest with you, but the, the way that they build and build and build and build, and then off in the corner you see like a little a little flashing light, or they build and build and you hear, and everybody starts freaking out over a knock. I just think that it's quite silly, to be honest with you, but I am interested in this. I have to assume that this is pretty good for it to have spurred the interest in a television channel or a network to start a documentary or a documentary series that has lasted so long. So I'm more curious about this than I am the entirety of the uh, Ghost Adventure series. All right, next up is a series of movies that I have not watched yet. They all came out at the same time. I bought them all the same day, but I still have not watched these. So, first up, it's the, uh, the Ghost House Underground series. First up is Brotherhood of Blood. I have not watched, like I said, haven't watched any of these movies yet. Excuse me, this one's got uh, Ken Foray and Sid Haig in it. There they are right there. One has to assume that they're vampires. Let's see, two horror legends reunite again. After the success of Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects, leg legendary actor Sid Haig and horror icon Ken Foray team up again in Brotherhood of Blood, a claustrophobic thriller about a team of vampire hunters who must infiltrate the nest of the undead to save one of their own. So, it sounds pretty good. It's got two great horror icons in it. I just simply haven't watched it yet. One of these days I'm probably going to sit down and try and tear through all of these movies, well, I'm not going to get to it in one day, but over a course of a couple days, tear through all these movies. So, going forward, just know I have not watched any of the Ghost House uh, Underground movies. Next up is Dance of the Dead. I just got done saying I didn't watch these. This actually looks familiar. Uh, with the prom only hours away, the usual suspects of, Kos of Kosa High are preoccupied with the annual rituals of teendom. One night of the, on the night of the big dance when the dead unexpectedly rise to eat the living, polar opposite groups will be forced to unite in their final chance to save the town from the zombies. 
I don't think I've seen this, but that looks very, that image alone looks very familiar to me. Uh, I don't know if I watched something else that was of very similar ilk that is like reminiscent of this movie. I really like that skull a lot. Um, was it one of the Cabin Fever movies? Didn't one of the Cabin Fever movies take pro place at a prom or something goofy? I don't remember what it was. I don't remember. But that definitely looks familiar to me. All right, next up, also from Ghost House Underground, Dark Floors. Sarah is a distressed little girl whose father is worried about her health. Not distressed, diseased. Sarah is a diseased little girl whose father is worried about her health. Concerned for her after a near-fatal accident with a hospital scanning device, the father decides to immediately remove his daughter from the institution and probably sue the hell out of him. With his daughter and her freaky monster drawings in hand, he makes way for the nearest elevator, but it breaks down. Trapped in there, trapped them with trapping Jesus Christ, trapping them with others. Yet the innocent, uh, the incident is only the beginning of a decent. De can't read. Maybe that's a bad idea today. Tra blah 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 blah. Yet the incident is the only the beginning of a descent into a nightmare. As the ele as the elevator doors open, the hospital appears mysteriously deserted. Silent Hill esque. Uh, when mutilated bodies are found, creatures from the dark world start f uh, start a frightening attack. It soon, it soon becomes clear that the survival of the group may rest solely on the little girl. I don't think it is, but that almost looks like Bruce Willis there. I, don't. I think that also just may be my bad eyesight playing tricks on me. There ain't no way in the world that's Bruce Willis. Alright, next up is The Last House in the Woods. So there's the house at the end of the street, the last house on the left, the last house on Hell Street, and now the last house in the woods. Young lovers escape a group of bullies seeking to harm them and take refuge with a seemingly kind older couple. All too late, we discover that the older pair is, has a dark hidden secret which unfolds in the quiet, secluded last house in the woods. This one actually sounds more interesting to me than the first three that I read. I like stories like that. I like when it's like an old couple and they're really strange or twisted or evil or possessed or something like that because you don't, to me, for me, when it's older people that are the evil ones, that is more troubling to me than it is when it's children. I think that the, the kid thing has been done so many times over the years, possessed kids, evil kids, tormented kids and so forth that, uh, even Gage comes to mind from Pet... Whatever. That's been done so many times. I think that it's a, a refreshing twist when it's an older couple, like an old man and an old lady. If you've never seen the movie called The Visit, that movie jacked me up. Now, I didn't see that coming at all. Watch The Visit if you ever get a chance. I'll get that in one of my section of my collection videos eventually. Awesome movie. M. Night Shyamalan. All right, back to, back to business. No Man's Land, Rise of the Reeker. All right, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, there's eight of these all together. And that's got a great big old paragraph, and I'm not reading it. All right, trapping between the living and the dead again. Or trapped between the living and the dead again. All right, I don't want to read all this. I really don't. Caught in Death Valley, literally. The, I don't know. I'm not reading it. All right, No Man's Land. Next up, room 205. Also a gigantic paragraph. This movie has some of the most awesome shock effects that I've ever seen, and that is from slasherpool.com. So I don't know what this one's about either, but it's got another gigantic paragraph. What do the paragraphs look on the other one? All right. Not too bad, so I guess I'll read this one. Wanting to start afresh. I don't really care for that word. Wanting to start afresh, Catherine moves from the, proven from the province into a dorm from the province. Catherine moves from the province into a dormitory in Copenhagen and enrolls at the university. But when she crosses Conniving, Conniving Sane, what in the world is that word? Conniving? Never heard that word in my life. Conniving 
Sane by getting to... Nope, done. Not reading this one. That almost sounds like it's written in broken English, and that'll drive me crazy. Next up is The Substitute. Wasn't there a movie already called The Substitute? Like, several movies called The Substitute. With uh, Jim Belushi and Tom Berenger. I'm remembering that correctly, right? All right. She's so evil that she's out of this world. That's a pretty ridiculous, terrible tagline. A small town sixth grade class gets a new substitute teacher who wants to train them for a mysterious international competition in Paris. But something isn't right. How is she able to read their minds? Why is she so mean? And how does she so cleverly manipulate all of the parents into believing how great she is when it's obvious to the whole class that she's a nightmare come true? As the story unfolds, we find that there's a reason she seems to be from another planet. Eh. Maybe it's interesting. I don't know. It's, it, certain points of that sound kind of cool, but then it's... I don't know. A substitute teacher from another world? Okay. Most teachers, I think, are, are from another... Ne never mind. Alright, and last in this series is a movie called Trackman. I don't know if that's Trackman or Trackman, whatever. Looks kind of cool. A feast for the eyes. After a successful bank heist, a couple of criminals take refuge in an abandoned underground tunnels of, in the abandoned underground tunnels of the subway system, in their, uh, with their three hostages. If a heist is successful, do you really need hostages? It all seems to be going as planned until they realize that there's no way out. What's worse, uh, a demented serial killer with a mission to kill is on the loose and prowling in the darkness. I don't know. I don't know whether that sounds good or not. He's got a pickaxe. Pickax. It takes place underground in tunnels. It's kind of remiss, uh, reminiscent of uh, My Bloody Valentine, right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Who made this? The makers of 30 Days of Night, which I love, and The Grudge, which I don't. So, who knows? That really doesn't sound all that interesting to me. All right, next up, we got Ghost Ship with a snap case. These old things. I have a bunch of these from many, many moons ago. Ghost Ship is really cool. It's awesome. It's exactly what you what it says it is. Uh, there's really not any anything clever about the title of this movie. It's a cruise ship filled with ghosts. It's really awesome. One of the scariest, most, most original horror movies in years. Finders Keepers by Finders Keepers. Any abandoned ship floating in international waters can be claimed and towed to port by whoever is fortunate enough to find it. Or, in the case of one team of salvage experts, unfortunate enough. Ghost Ship is a stylist, effects pack chiller from House on Haunted Hill and 13 Ghost producers Joel Silver, Robert Zemeckis, and Gilbert Adler. Salvagers trained for, an, for any situation imaginable come face to... Come face to horrifying face with the unimaginable after boarding a derelict luxury liner. Juliana Margulies, Gabriel Byrne, Ron Eld Eldard, and Isaiah Washington are among the hands on deck who will confront the seafaring collector of souls. It's like a tongue twister. Steve Beck directs this terror tour de force Bon Voyage Fright Fans. The movie's a lot better than that thing makes it sound. Or at least better than the, t the way it reads. Ghost Ship's really cool. Check that out. Alright, and here is a throwback to my childhood right here. Really, really cool movie. Ghost Story. I haven't watched this in a very, very long time. The time has come to tell the tale. Very cool movie. It's uh, like all these older guys sitting around commentating and narrating. Uh, put together a gloomy New England house, a dark night, and four Americans, four of America's legendary leading men, and you'll have all the ingredients for a classic ghost story. A spellbinding motion picture based on the bestseller by Peter Straub. 
Co-starring Patricia Neal, Ghost Story is about the members of the Chowder Society, Fred Astaire, Melvin Douglas, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., and John Houseman, who get together each week and shall share tell Jesus share tales of horror. Soon, however, a secret terror invades the group, and one by one they die mysteriously because of a real ghost story that is part of their past. This is really cool. I remember this when I like I said, it's a flashback for me from when I was a kid. I loved this movie. And it had been probably a good 20 years or more since I saw or thought of this movie at all. And one day I'm in the store in Best Buy and that's sitting on the shelf. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. And there it is. I have it in my collection now. It's an awesome movie. All right. Next up is Ginger Snaps. I only have this on standard definition. I don't think I've ever seen this anywhere to buy on Blu-ray, to be honest with you. If I had, I would assume that I would have it. Uh, because this is a really good movie. I dig Ginger Snaps. It's set in a high school. Um, chick gets attacked by a werewolf. Obviously becomes a werewolf. That's kind of a dead giveaway right there, don't you think? Really good movie. She's trying to figure out what to do to stop becoming a werewolf. Her sister's trying to help her. Really awesome. Ginger and Bridget, two sisters trapped in suburbia, are obsessed with mayhem, torture, and death until they get a taste of the real thing. Bitten by a wild animal, Ginger begins to mutate into a sexy, uncontrolled woman with some nasty canine tendencies. Is it a virus? Is it a curse? Or the first step toward becoming a vicious werewolf? It's awesome. Intelligent, inspired, and truly terrifying. This award-winning horror film makes you look at raging teenage hormones in a shocking new way. Ginger Snaps is really cool. I have to assume that most of you out there in the horror community already are aware of this movie. And if you're not for whatever reason, check this one out. It's really, really good. Now, as far as Ginger Snaps 2 and Ginger Snaps Back are concerned, I thought they were okay movies. They're definitely not as good as the, uh, the original movie was. Ginger Snaps Back is like a prequel. It's the beginning. It's, it it kind of jumps back in time. It's it's weird. It's a weird watch. It was for me anyway. And Ginger Snaps 2. I don't remember if that is a direct like sequel or if it was something different. Excuse me. Get ready to be cursed again. Bridget is an addict. After mixing blood with her late sister. Yeah, okay. It is a, it is a direct sequel. Her late sister Ginger in an attempt to learn more about the condition she has been infected with the curse. Yeah, I can barely read that. Okay, so this one definitely is a sequel. It's been a long time since I watched these movies, folks. But I definitely can tell you without a doubt that, in my opinion, it, it's very obvious those movies were forgettable for me. I didn't enjoy, enjoy them nearly as much as I enjoyed Ginger Snaps. And both of they came out pretty close together, too. I wouldn't be surprised if they shot those movies back-to-back -back and released them a year apart or maybe even less. I just remember there being a Ginger Snaps... And then all of a sudden, there were three movies. It, very strange. All right, here's one that I definitely have not watched. The Girl in the Photographs. I just got this at Dollar Tree for a buck. Probably about a month, month and a half, maybe two months ago. It's in one of my Dollar Tree haul videos. Uh, in Wes Craven's final film, small, small town store clerk Colleen is eager to escape her tedious existence and annoying boyfriend. Yeah, that's, that's us boyfriends tend to be annoying uh then gruesome photo men i think in general are probably very annoying to women definitely a different energy uh there is a serial killer in town or just a prankster with a sick sense of humor when a cocky photographer and his entourage arrive in search of a fresh face the terror closes in as colleen discovers the price of fame might be too high discovers that the price of fame might be too high I've heard uh, several people talk about this movie, and everybody seems to say that this is pretty good. It is a Wes Craven movie, so one has to assume that it's a decent movie, but I simply haven't watched it yet. Alright, here's one that I didn't even see coming, and then some. I was in Best Buy one day, saw it on the shelf, watched the trailer on my phone, and picked it up. The Girl with All the Gifts. This is a very cool movie. Uh, these children are part zombie 
and part human, and most of the time seem to be perfectly normal, but they're not. It's really, really cool. The best zombie movie since 28 Days Later. Humanity has been all but destroyed by a fungal disease that, excuse me, that eradicates free will and turns its victims into flesh-eating hungries. All right, so they're called hungries in this movie. Only a small group of children seems to be immune to its effects. At an army base in rural England, these unique children are being studied and subjected to cruel experiments. When the base falls, one little girl escapes and must discover what she is, ultimately deciding both her own future and that of the human race. This is cool. And I'm pretty sure it's pretty readily available, both on streaming services as well as to buy in stores. I was just in Best Buy very recently, and I believe they still had this available in there. I highly recommend that movie. I thought it was fabulous. Very, very good movie. Let me see. And it's a horror movie with Glenn Close in it, too. So that should tell you something. Uh, right. Next up is Glass. I have not seen this yet. Believe it or not, I have not seen Unbreakable ever, which is crazy. I have seen Split, but I have not seen Glass. Split was killer. I heard Unbreakable was really, really good. I own it, haven't watched it. I think I own every M. Night Shyamalan movie there is. But uh, I have not watched them all. I have watched most of them, but not all of them. So I don't even know if I want to read this one because just I don't even want to spoil the story for myself at all. So yeah, Glass. I heard it was really good. Most of M. Night's movies are really good. So I'm sure this one will fall in line with everything else. Next up is Godzilla. And after that is Godzilla King of the Monsters. These movies kind of blend together for me. Uh, I want to get into Godzilla, but just basically because my son is into Godzilla and the guys on the stream that I'm on every Saturday night are into Godzilla. But for whatever reason, I've never really been into it. I sincerely believe that it's because when I was younger, uh, my older brother used to watch Godzilla movies and karate movies and that kind of stuff all the time. And I absolutely can't stand my brother. I don't like him at all. So I think that anything that I could do to make me avoid spending any time with him whatsoever, that's what I did. So I never really watched Godzilla. I have watched both of these, but like I said, they kind of blend together for me. But if I remember correctly, this is the one that you don't really see very much of Godzilla in it at all, but I'm not positive of that. Uh, <clears throat> I saw this movie in IMAX, and I've, the one thing I definitely remember, it would cost me a lot of money to watch this movie in the theater. It was uh, my wife and I and both of our sons, and it was around $80 for the tickets. Absolutely ridiculous. But I don't remember a lot about this one, and I remember a little bit more about this one. I think that you see much more Godzilla in this movie, but I'm not positive. I would have to rewatch those to be honest with you to give you know a, any kind of good commentary on them. They just the Godzilla movies just bleed together. That the Matthew Broderick one, which everybody seems to dislike. Why is my earring sticking out like that? The Matthew Broderick one that everybody seems to like, or excuse me, seems to dislike. I liked it, but that's probably because I don't really know a lot about the history of Godzilla. Whatever you like, what you like, right? All right, I'm gonna get out of here. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. Thank you for watching. Later, folks.